Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. We've gotten a ton of questions about the dry dock, and we've answered many of them in previous videos. Make sure you go to our dry docking playlist, check that out. Uh, we're, we're not going to talk about too much of that stuff in this video. Uh, this video is more of a potpourri of other information relating to the dry dock that we found. We have some of the plans related to the dry dock here that uh, give us some of the numbers and things related to how many, how much, all that sort of stuff. So in previous videos, we've talked about how wide the dry dock is and how long and how deep and how much water. Uh, so this is going to be some other random numbers. For example, the dry dock has seven capstans around it, three on each side and one directly aft. These capstans can be used to pull the ship into dry dock and it can be used when you're uh, getting her square over the blocks to move her side to side. According to this sheet, each capstan can move 30,000 pounds of material 30 feet per minute. If you drop the weight to 1,000 pounds, you crank the speed up to 100 feet per minute. So depending on your weight, the capstans are able to pull faster or slower. In addition to these seven capstans, there are also 42 cast bollards around the dry dock. These are points where the ship can be tied off uh, as you're bringing her in, as you're bumping her, for a variety of reasons. Uh, for example, when we refloat the vessel, we're probably going to do it the night before we actually move the ship. And so she will be tied off here as if it was a regular pier. And then in the morning, we cast off the lines and we tow her out of here. In addition to the 42 bollards, you can also make the ship off at one of the cleats around the wing walls of the dry dock. They're spaced approximately one every 50 feet. So there's about 40 of those around the dry dock as well. They are interesting uh, because many of them are broken at this point where some of the arms have busted off. And so you can see some of the manufacturing of them. You can see that there's a small hollow area inside. Uh, maybe that's where some piece was attached to put it into and out of the mold. And you can tell that they were cast. Likely, they were cast right here at the Philadelphia Navy Yard uh, in one of the foundries and then brought over late in the construction of the dry dock sometime in 1920 or 21, if I had to guess. From this plan, you can also see the drainage culverts. The drainage culverts are the graded areas down below. That's where the water comes up from when we're flooding the dry dock. That's where it drains down to to get to the dewatering pumps. We've got a video about the pumps coming up soon as well. Four of these culverts go into the pump house, one from each side for water coming in and one from each side for water going out. Two of the most interesting things you can see from this plan is uh, that the dry dock could actually be broken into two dry docks and that there was once an elevator. Man, my knees wish that was still the case. Directly behind me, you can see where the elevator stood until about 2007 when it was demolished. The uh, right under the aft side of the ship, a little bit over on the port side, you can see a ramp. They tried to destroy the ramp with a jackhammer and after two days, that's as far as they got, so they left it like that. The area aft of the ship under the ramp was the pit where the elevator could sit down into. The ramp would take you right up onto the floor and it would come up to the wing wall and then over. It was kind of a skeletonized thing. It wasn't uh, too much to it since the dry dock is supposed to flood. And uh, it was removed so that larger ships could fit in the dry dock. Full bodied modern type merchant ships that have like really long flat sides have to uh, be able to fit in here. We've got no issues with the curve of our stern, but other ships do have issues. Some of the original plans for this dry dock from the uh, 19 teens called for it to turn League Island, which was originally an island, which got turned into something of a peninsula when the interior part was dredged into a basin, uh, was going to turn it into an island again. The dry dock was going to go all the way through to the reserve basin and form a second channel in that direction. And that way it could uh, have a dry dock uh, from either direction. Part of this involves having a uh, separate caisson inside the dry dock so that uh, say you can be doing 
construction of a ship in one part of the dry dock and maintenance of another ship in the other part of the dry dock. From here, you can see another weird, awkward flight of stairs, a little bit less than halfway down the dry dock, maybe a third of the way down the dry dock. And that actually forms uh, something of a Mesoamerican pyramid with another flight of steps on the far side. And the area in between had room for a second caisson to seat. So you could be long-term building a new ship in this back part, would obviously be much smaller than a battleship, and in the front part you could be dry docking other smaller ships. This dry dock was used to either dry dock or build multiple ships at the same time. There's a great picture in the hallway of the building here of multiple submarines in the dry dock at once. Uh, this looks like about post-World War I, I think there were R-class submarines. And of course my beloved Coast Guard Cutter Taney was built in this dry dock alongside three of her sister ships all of them built together in the same part of the dry dock since during that time period there wasn't a lot of maintenance going on or uh, new construction so they could occupy this dry dock for that purpose for about a year long period of time we are starting to come to the end of this project uh, as of filming this we have about a week left here in dry dock number three at the former philadelphia navy yard operated by north atlantic ship repair so we're running out of time to film new content if there's anything else that uh, you think is interesting relating to the dry docking, let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, we might be able to film it in the last week. Also, uh, what was your favorite part of the dry docking over the last, I don't know, eight weeks, nine weeks that we've been here? Leave a link to your favorite video about it in the comment section down below. A lot of folks haven't watched every single video. If there's a part that you thought was really cool, let other people know about it. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and the channel. Thanks for watching.